I followed my heart. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> not something you should do if you uh, want to be ambitious. Um, or maybe I was ambitious, just uh, had my focus. <laughs> that depends on what your heart is telling you. <laughs> yeah. Depends where your heart is. Kill them. Kill them all. <laughs> yeah. That's a bad heart. Oh, that's uh... yeah. The heart in the dick's not a good one to, be fo- to follow either. <laughs> Let's not go there. It, <laughs> it can be throbbing quite hard at times. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the heartache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fine territory already. Who, who yeah. is driving today? Um, Hope that's it. Is no, yeah. yeah, crap. Does that mean it's my edit as well? <laughs> hey, so <laughs> oh, first day at work, edit. Could it get much worse? <laughs> Shit. All right, guys. Uh, welcome to the number one crude mistakes podcast, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, with uh, KJ Glenn and Howard from uh, Crude But Deficient, number one project and behind <laughs> the mistakes. Not in that order, but I mean, who cares? It's a uh, half pint. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do we do it when you do the half pint first? <laughs> <laughs> how can you go from here? <laughs> you can't do the half pint first. I can't cope with that. No, me neither. So. I mean, I I know that you're scrambled in the head after being back at work, but I mean, some things have to do in the right order, I think. Absolutely. All right, let's dial it back and go main episode. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, guys. Uh, so what have you been doing since last time? Any videos? Any making? Go. Catch Plan. It. No, I, I, haven't, I haven't published a video. I'm the only one who, who hasn't, so I shouldn't go first. So, Glenn. Okay, I've published my video, yes. I published the Strumstick video. I managed to get it edited by last Friday. It was a bit of a slog to get it edited this time around, I thought. But, uh, yeah, got it out. It's doing its thing. It's almost died to death now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I can join the club. The Dead Video Society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, um, it did. It has done lots of views for one of my videos, but it's not done lots of views for one of my Strumstick videos. So, a little bit disappointed, and I've still got my fingers crossed. It revi- it revives a little bit. But, yeah, uh, it's the Strumstick Dead. It might be, which is a shame. I feel like I've just hit my stride with it. <laughs> I was going to do a crocheted one next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a, it's a, the best video so far, and it's a really good build. So uh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say the video is the best. I just sort of followed the lines of the first drumstick video, to be honest with you. But it was nice and smooth. There wasn't too much arm in it, and <laughs> like <that. So laughs> no wobbly cameras like there was in the first one. So yeah. Oh, so you mean respect. you're taking out the charm? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Taking yeah. out some of the homemade element. <laughs> Wasn't the second one filmed with, uh, no. with that camcorder camera? Was it no, part no, of it? No. no? Okay. No. All right. No, if, if you, you can see, if you look at my channel, you can see when the camcorder hit because the views plummeted <laughs> and didn't really recover until I started making instruments and filming with the phone again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but the the video was uh was it yeah i thought it was a a great stromstick video uh yeah. Yeah, to add to the the pile of instruments <laughs> that's right <laughs> you, you, i mean you really have to make a, a better wall mounting for them in the background because it's, it's it looks rather crowded and you have a lot of free space above your head from where the camera is looking there now so you, you can yeah, work, work with the work with the space yeah, you could put them um, uh, horizontal as well. That's uh, that's a good tip. Next video, obscure <laughs> yeah. obscure yes. instrument mounts. <laughs> <laughs> it's another that's niche awesome. to hit, isn't it? 
But yeah. Yeah, I, one thought, one thing I, I I thought of when I watching the video was that you didn't mention the oak dowel that you talked about in the podcast. No, I didn't show that mistake. But but I did see it on camera. I think. Did you? <laughs> because oh, it was and... a strange little dowel in the in the wood. Oh no! It was a. Um, it was actually scrap oak. So um, it had got a few marks and holes in it before I even started with it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So no, but that wasn't you, Miss Drilling. No, 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 no. You didn't. You didn't see the bit I fixed properly, KJ. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought I did because you talked about it that you yeah. had to fix the thing, and then you didn't yeah. mention it. I think you, you did. You did a too good job of it. Basically, you should have uh, slapped some noodles and epoxy on it, and then uh, sanded it. I mean, that uh, seems to be uh, <laughs> making videos uh, go viral. <laughs> some noodles. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's old news, I guess. I think it's a year or two since when that was all the videos I got in my feed was people fixing everything from car bonnets to toilet seat. They just like, all right, they crumbled up some noodles and uh, put it in and then epoxy over and sanded it and just <laughs> made it look like you know, anything. <laughs> That's new to me, that. <laughs> no, Google it. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> or no, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I didn't mention last week when I got Steve over to play the drumstick, I rang him that morning, as I said in, the, in last week's podcast, but um, and he, and he, I said, do you want to have a little practice on the uh, one of the existing drumsticks and see if you can come up with something a bit more steampunk? And he sent me back a lovely piece of music that he put together, but it was far too gentle for the look of this drumstick. So I messaged him back and said, I need something a little bit more heavy metal. <laughs> and he's like, it's a drumstick, it's not heavy metal. <laughs> but then his little mind started whirring and he actually cracked it so I'm very proud of him for that he should listen more to folk metal I think because you can play metal on any instrument yes. folk metal a thing yeah yeah. I've sounds seen... like a Swedish thing to me <laughs> it's very much an English thing I think it's a lot Is of it? uh, Celtic vibes and that sort of thing uh, Okay. Yeah. Uh, I- I'm not sure if she's a part of it at least not by intention but i don't remember her name i'll I'll, uh put it in the description but uh she's a harpist and she's like someone made requests and i think someone started by uh requesting uh acdc or something like that and she's like okay i'll do that and she just (laughs) people just like Oh man, she's playing metal on a harp. This is amazing, yeah. and she, uh, she she's using all the distortion pedals. And uh, I think one of the the best videos I've seen, she did uh, "Fair of the Dark" or something like that of Iron Maiden, and it is amazing. So, like, yep, I'm into harps now. But still, I would like to see a banjo in a proper metal band setting yeah. on stage. That would be awesome. Yeah, that's probably be something American, I feel like. <laughs> Very much so. And that got me thinking, I'm not... I mean, you have so many metal genres that I can keep track, but do you have country metal? I never heard about that, but that is something I'm going to Google afterwards because it needs to exist. Yeah, what are the... Oh, uh, the African black metal cowboys, I think, is something you can Google. <laughs> they walk yeah. around in, in in cowboy at a black leather in uh, in the African heat. It's it's really oh weird. It looks great. <laughs> I th- I'll certainly do that. And I think the closest thing I've seen previously is Hazy Dixie, <laughs> which is basically an ACDC cover band. And that is bluegrass banjo and the, the <laughs> suspenders and everything, but it's not That's like great. proper metal. But uh... <laughs> tell you what, I've noticed just lately when we first got an Alexa in the house, which has been a couple of years ago now, I used to ask her to play heavy metal, and she'd play heavy metal. Now to get the same music now, it's a couple of years on, and I'm a little bit older. I have to ask for classic rock, <laughs> which is slightly upsetting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I remember the frustration. I think I was five or six years. Of course, my parents had. 
I've I've been raised on on country music, so they ha- I have still all the uh, LPs, uh, and uh, ABBA was a great thing as well uh, from my parents. And then of course we listen to radio, and and sometimes some classic rock tunes came on. And of course, I did not know what the genre was or what the bands were called or anything. And trying to describe to your parents, I, I want to buy music, rock music, basically, but not knowing what it is and how to describe it. So it was like fast music. And <laughs> luckily, my father caught on instantly. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And uh, he found some classic uh rock or heavy metal at that time which is now probably a classic rock <laughs> she yeah. said it's not heavy metal <laughs> as we know it today but yeah i mean i, I remember something similar when it first started the the first uh, commercial radio stations in sweden in like the 90s mid 90s i think there there was a rock station i was like okay now i get it these are all the songs that i liked all together it's called hard rock and heavy metal. Okay, now I get it because I always been listening mainstream radio, and I I liked some songs more than others. And now, yeah. oh, <laughs> now all of those are in the same station. Nice. Now I understand a bit more my, about myself. And of course, we had the 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 local radio station as well, and they got a quite good selection of music at one point. And I I remember. I think it was twice a week they had a, a radio show on where you could actually request music and you requested the music you wanted to hear and then you were sitting ready with a mixtape and uh, the <laughs> press uh, play record <laughs> button and of course half the time they screwed it up by talking over the intro or they cut the outro solo short and you got pissed so I probably have some old mixtapes laying around with some yeah botched uh, intros and outros on them. Yeah, and the, <laughs> and the curse radio edits that were not seven minutes long as the songs are <laughs> supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. What I do remember is there is two guys in Norway and they ran a well, it's not a music show, but it is a music show, basically. And they got something that's unheard of, but um, they got the, the the music station or the radio station to accept that they decide all the music that they play. And in one episode, we are going to do uh, the entire Dark Side of the Moon album, like from Jesus. start to finish. <laughs> Uh, that was one episode, and uh, they, of course, uh, they played the entire Shine On You Crazy Diamond from Pink Floyd. I think it's 17 minutes long. So they started talking, <laughs> and then, all right, we'll go and drink coffee now for 17 minutes because you're going to hear everything and all the solos and everything. And they did not talk over the intros and outros. So, of course, they got a lot of very, well, regular listeners and fan base. So, yeah. But nice. of course, as anyone else, they went to a, a streaming slash podcast service, and so now we have to pay to listen to their show, and they do have ad snips in between, which is kind of ruining the concept. So yeah, stop listening to them, I'm afraid. We'll get out one day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> T- talking about all this makes me remember that growing up, I actually really wanted to be a radio DJ. Because that sounded really nice. Just sitting in the studio and talking to people who didn't <laughs> have a chance to talk back and play music all day. And, and is this the closest you've got so far? Yes. I realized <laughs> that having a podcast, that's pretty darn close. I mean, you can talk back to me, but I mean, sometimes you need someone to uh, to bounce off. So I think that's good. I mean, we, we could try that for a few episodes now that we have UDO, so we can make our own music, so we don't have to buy rights for something, so we can start and and now you'll listen to, and then we just have some fake band names and music with topics that's uh, AI generated <laughs> five minutes before we start. <laughs> that's have, actually not half bad. <laughs> I've got about f- 15, minute, uh, 15 different uh, Steve songs. Some of them are a little alternative, but we can do a show tonight if you want. The Strumstick special. <laughs> no, no. It's not all Strumstick. No, we'll, uh... true, true. A deep diving I'm all Steve. Of... 
it needs a separate episode. But yeah, I'm all for a Steve special. That, yeah. uh, that would be nice. And we just uh, have him on as a guest and play his music. Yeah, <laughs> and just go really proper radio format. <laughs> that would be cool. He'd probably love that. <laughs> Ah, oh, yeah, that would be brilliant. <laughs> I also had uh, a period I wanted to work in radio, and of course, the the local radio station, a friend of mine, he, he was actually running the the mixer and everything. And uh, it's a few times I was just sitting in, and uh, we were talking about like trying to break me into that work. But then, I'm not sure what happened. To which one of us moved away and? studied first and the radio station kind of died uh, a natural death so it never happened so of course i ventured into uh, like uh, sketch uh, scene work and so on so i did some audio and uh, visual uh, light uh, for a couple of years there but uh, yeah it never panned out to become a big uh, I wouldn't say radio star because I was more interesting in just sitting behind uh, the scenes, uh, pulling all the knobs. I didn't even want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talking about your production work, let's talk about your video of our. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, someone commented, well, this was a bit different from you, but we like it. And uh, yeah, I can't really see that I have found the what defines me i I still feel there's an eclectic uh (laughs) array of videos and this was the the great mix-off video between the petrol powered kitchenaid and uh, the electrical one and it was a hoot to make it It took me a day no that's a lie took me two days because i fucked up all the video on the first (laughs) one but uh once you had to redo it the next day it went really quickly it was an absolute hoot to watch I yeah. thought it was fantastic. This it's that sort of video, that the knife video, and some of your other videos that you've done is the reason I subscribed to you in the first place. I yeah. thought it was brilliant. And I, I felt it myself because I had a blast filming it, and of, of course in the edit as well. And it's one of those videos when it's finished, I think, oh, I should have done that. When I play the jazz music, I should have just been doing the, the Burt Reynolds pose on the table. <laughs> and of course, now the video is out, so I can't just pull it down to re-record that bit. But uh, yeah. And then, of course, as any video that you are uh, half <laughs> pleased with, it, yes. it's tanked. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> uh, I think I passed, a, I passed 100 views now, but yeah, not much yeah. <laughs> more. But but the thing is, one day when you do when you do that video that gets everybody's imagination and gets everybody watching, and everybody will then rewatch that video, and uh, yeah, you know, then it'll catch up, won't it? And it is, and it is kind of fun because I I think I did a short before that that pulled a couple of new subscribers, and and of course I uploaded the video, and. Instantly, I lost a subscriber, so that I just, all right, that was a Kenwood guy, I guess. <laughs> Not on board with KitchenAid. But uh, then I, one or two came on board again, and it's nice. I think I mentioned it before, but when you get just one subscriber on a specific day and you and you look at your video statistics, you can actually see that the list of videos that has been watched the last 24 hours. Yeah. It's very long, but it's only got one view on all the videos down. And yeah. then, you know, it's the one guy that subscribes. So he's been going through your catalog and picking and like, all right, I'll, sub- I'll subscribe to this maniac. And then it's kind of fun to see which videos he has been jumping between. And, but I haven't seen a pattern because it's it's been all over the place. But yeah, it's yeah. fun. I was, I was, it was great to see, see you actually. Uh, use the thing you made and put it to put it through, through a test uh, actually yeah. see how it performed and that is of course I think there is one or two more videos in it of course I, I would like to see bread dough uh, to see if the, the power of the petrol one actually makes a difference there because it lost the, the whisking of the, the cream spoiler alert um <laughs> And then I think it was Chloe who said, ooh, you should do hard butter. And that is 
like throwing a brick at it. But yeah, hard butter is something you do sometimes in a baking situation. Yeah. And but then again, it's like I really like it, and the way it came out, I don't want to break it. Uh, <laughs> although it would be cool. But then again, it it has the one plastic gear that is made to fail if something jams. So and that costs like two pounds to replace and. I know how to open it now, so it should be an easy <laughs> fix yeah. if I break something. I thought it was great to see them side by side as well, to see the the difference. I mean, your, yours does look better. Of course, but of course it's a red color. Um, might be, <laughs> might be. Um, and then I thought I'm going to make a new thumbnail for the video, and I also feel kind of bad because it's on my table. Uh, the Uglen requested if I could make a a thumbnail and I thought all right I'll knock one out and then uh the wife needed the office and then we had a children's birthday and it's like I have like three or four days in a row without access to my computer so this is the first time in four days so yeah so it's your fault like, that my click through rate is only 2.5 yeah but we'll Sorry. see if we can fix that <laughs> because uh, I'm, I'm I'm thinking about uploading a new uh um a new thumbnail and also might alter uh, the heading a bit to see if it makes any difference, it, which yeah. it probably won't. I mean, it yeah. tanked over a TikTok as well. I've, I've all the shorts I've made on TikTok has done really well in comparison to both YouTube and uh, um, Instagram, but this one, no, it tanked. It got zero views basically. So, it's such a yeah. shame. I mean, KJ says that, you know, seeing the mixer side by side competing against each other was his favorite thing. But it was actually the comedy timing and the way you put the video together, the, yeah. just the gentle switching of different angles. And then at one one point, you've just put a really obvious pause in it, which <laughs> I, I don't think I would dare do. I wouldn't dare put a pause in a video. I'm not confident enough. But to do that and to pull it off and get that comedy timing right, I thought was spot on. Yeah, and that that was all lucky streak because I planned to do it, but I did not do it for long enough because it feels really awkward. And then I was sitting mm. in the edit, of course, and uh, the video clips were ruined because it was on auto white balance. And when you're outside uh, in the sun with a white jacket on, it re it jumps all over the place. But I could not see that on the small screen on the camera. But of course, I played around with it to see if there is anything I need to change when I have to re-record it anyway. And then trying to get that jazzy music over the awkward silence pause, it was not long enough. So uh, <laughs> when I re-recorded it, like you have to just stare dead-eyed into the camera <laughs> for way more longer than you think is necessary. And you're just standing there. <laughs> Of course, this is outside and it was a sunny day, so all the neighbors were out and probably someone <laughs> would walk past and just, why the fuck is he standing there like a statue in a full <laughs> chef's uniform and a camera? <laughs> <laughs> and all those thoughts that rush through your head while you're standing there. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I, say, I think it was excellent. I always think it's a real shame when uh, somebody puts a really nice video out and it doesn't get many views it's just wrong but like i say hopefully one day they'll be discovered again yeah yeah so uh, uh... any other making done this week chaps other than videos well obviously not you kj not video wise anyway <laughs> <laughs> no no I've, i really felt behind because we were all sitting chatting on whatsapp and all of us uh, editing but then you yes. were, you finished with yours and published it and i <laughs> were just <laughs> that's how it works when i edit something <laughs> I was barely getting started, so I felt <laughs> I, I, that kind of ruined my my feel for editing. So I haven't touched my oh, my video no. since. Now I've been doing in stuff in the physical world instead. Uh, so making, yeah, some of it. Uh, I finished uh, all of the welding table, uh, the um, the tool holder, and that sort of thing as well. So all of it Ooh, that's finished. But I realized that to get the timeline right i really should make the fixing my mistakes video first and have this come after it because that fits better with the narrative not that anyone cares but it it feels better for me <laughs> uh but since i'm not even halfway through the rose cage uh, edit i'll probably have that uh, footage done 
before I I get that far either. So yeah, it's gonna <laughs> yeah you're gonna have to wait on this one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did. Uh... I didn't realize I have a few projects. I, I have been doing some making this week, uh, not YouTube related. And uh, I also have started to prepare and finding the parts for the next projects. And I realized they are summer projects and we are in August. And in Norway, that means that it's going to snow tomorrow, probably, and uh, <laughs> ruin the the illusion of summer and holiday in the videos. So I need to uh, up my game there. But uh, Yesterday, or the day before, uh, we have a condensing dryer. And it started complaining that the, the recipient tray was full. I'm like, mm, no, it's not. And uh, of course, I, I've done this before a couple of years ago. It is, there is a tray and a pump in the bottom that it collects all the condensed water and then it pumps it up to like the holding tank, the one that you empty out. Yeah. And in that sump where the pump is located, over several years, of course, it collects lint and you have condensed water. And I think it's the, it's most likely the soap or the conditioner or whatever you put into the washer um, that just mixes with that lint and it makes like a, a jello like substance. Now, the good thing is it, it keeps the lint in place so it doesn't enter into the <laughs> pump. Uh, so the pump doesn't get ruined. But at some point, it just keeps all the water there. And there is a sensor on the pump assembly that tells you that the machine is full, basically. So after a few years, that tricks the machine into thinking that, all right, my tank is full. So I just stop drying. And that happens. And so now we can't start it again. So I need to take it apart clean everything and now of course i'm i host the pump assembly down and so on and that has a lot of electric components and connections so that needed to dry overnight so that's what i'm gonna do well not after this podcast it's gonna be tomorrow but then i have to put it back together again oh that's so, no uh, fun is it not at all. And I don't want to make <laughs> DIY videos. And of course, um, the first time I did it, someone has already done a video on this exact machine. And to whoever that is, I don't remember, but thank you. How many there, is a, there is a hardware store worth of screws you have to <laughs> screw out before you can actually get to the part. And I mean, that pump assembly and that tray should just have been behind a small access hatch, basically. I mean, you have, you have every other hatch to pull out the filters and so on for cleaning, but the pump, which is the main component, is the first thing they put on the floor before they built the machine around it. So, yeah. Oh dear. No but it is, all. it feels a bit powerful because you know they built them in such a way that most people would, it's not working anymore. You call a service guy and he has a startup fee and he needs to travel and come and fix it and it would be cheaper to buy a new one. And now I know I have already extended it for three, four years and I'm probably extending it for more so yeah yeah saving I'm money i want to i want to be the service guy in that situation i want <laughs> to be the one who knows how to fix it so i just <laughs> double down on trying to fix it yeah i i just had a memory of i'm sure you went through a similar thing with the washing machine before you replaced that i've just fixed the washing machine i've extended its life and then didn't that die and then you bought a suicidal one and what was the case with the washing machine I'm sure you'd fixed your old one, wasn't you? When you complained about it, scratching your arms up or something, trying to get in there or something. Yeah, because when we moved in here, we dropped it on its head from the lorry, so we had to duct tape it together. But it has worked for years, but then we got a new one, and I don't remember what failed. Did that face plant as well? No, that have... yeah, the, the new one face planted, yeah, because I did yeah. remove the, the safety pin, so the shock absorbers <laughs> did not work. So it was uh, uh, doing a Charleston dance on the tabletop there and uh, face planted to the floor. 
<laughs> We're seeing a recurring theme here. <laughs> but it, it, it was kind of good. I mean, it, it works. And it's like when you buy a new car, you are afraid of it until you get the first ding and scratch. And then you get more yeah. relaxed about it. And that, that's the same with the new washer. I mean, it's it's already banged up, but it's still tight and does its thing. So we're not afraid of it anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sometimes I just want to put that first scratch on it. Yeah, just to have it oh, done. <laughs> I I, re I remember. Yeah, the the old one almost burned the house down. That was the, the trick. Uh, yeah, I, something jammed and it uh, was rubbing on the rubber seal around. So I was sitting by my computer and it smells burned rubber here. Shouldn't be doing that. And when I went into the the washroom, it was filled with smoke. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spent um, the weekend. Uh, with the family, we went shopping for the day on Saturday, and then we spent some time with Strumstick Steve and his family on Sunday. So the only bit of making I've managed to do this week was a little bit of a play on the lathe. Which nice. Was very nice, yeah. Really, how, really enjoyable. How did that go? I, it was really enjoyable and went a lot better than I thought it was going to. <laughs> so it, it, was a, it wasn't an attempt at a whiskey glass, but a, an attempt at a, a glass-type vessel, if you like. So I, I bought, recently bought a chuck for it, a drill chuck, so I could run the force a bit down the centre to create the large hole. And that just worked an absolute dream. Yeah, because I was thinking about that when I was looking at the size. Which, what kind of tool did you use to get in there? Yeah. But yeah, force a bit, that's... Did you scrape it out as well, or was I, it just I, forcing a bit? It was just forcing a bit with a little bit of tidying up afterwards, but mainly at the bottom of the... on the inside of the bottom. As opposed to the sides, yeah. but it managed to get it so thin. It was unbelievable. Yeah, how it's thin was that? About three mil. That's proper thin. Yeah, <laughs> I think it still seems for a first time on a lathe. Yeah, like that. <laughs> I was really, really pleased with it, KJ. <laughs> That's insane. Did, did you uh, contemplate the grain direction before you started? Because I mean, uh, nah. I love oak, <laughs> but it is hard and brittle, so it I have tended to break it and snap it if you go too thin so yeah oh no i didn't think about anything like that i just cracked up <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the thing you should just yeah. just do it don't think yeah ignorant ignorance is bliss and all that <laughs> yeah. yeah but <laughs> then it must be properly centered as well if you get it that good and it doesn't tear through well, when in a you start off it. you start off kj by um you have two center points on it yeah on the piece of oak on either side either end and you turn a tenon which will then you flip it around, remove the tail stock out of the way, and you put the tenon in the actual chuck then. And yeah. Because you've turned it while it was in, in between those two center points, it's, it is always bang on dead center then. Yeah, but I mean, it's not uh, wobbly and any, any bearings or anything like that. Oh, no, no, no. It's Because it's then it solid. wouldn't, uh, because doing that, you don't have it held from two play to. From both sides, just yeah. held at one place, and then yeah. if there's something off, then it could go anywhere. No, yeah, you're dead right. Yeah, I can I can assure you the homemade lathe would not have been able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't, I know that the homemade lathe has a bit of a wobble on it, but uh, you know I was able to compensate for the bowl I made on it. But uh, yeah, no, there's no way I would have been able to do that. <laughs> so you. you... This is the the first one. Are you planning on on improving on it and doing a Mark II, Mark III? Definitely. Um, I'm hoping I can just get a little um, a little video out at the weekend. Actually, just a quick one, maybe just a long short of doing a whiskey glass or something. I think that'd be quite nice because I've, I, for the next couple of weeks, I can't see it. I'm going to have much time to start a big project. Got a few little bits and bobs to do, so. Quite nice. I quite like to get the lathe tonight. I bought a packet of Werther's Originals so I can, uh, <laughs> before each lathe video, I can eat a Werther's Original. <laughs> I mean, thought you should. Sure? Thought that would be a nice touch for the people, but no. <laughs> that would be a nice running gag that in any lathe video you have, there's always a bag somewhere. And of course, yeah. the, the one who knows or, and is in on the joke, they will. Like secretly look for it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. And that's a <laughs> nod, like a, in an accepting way. Yeah. 
<laughs> How many old man jokes are there? <laughs> <laughs> more and more, it seems like. I don't know, I don't know why, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Another thing I did in the last week was bought my body weight in uh, in steel, just to bury it in the garden. <laughs> not, not, not for a suit of armor, then. No, no. Uh, I think that's the the wrong uh, size of it. Uh, just long things, thin sheets. Oh, like, I mean, it could weld it together to some kind of armor, I guess. Long yeah. thin sheets seems ideal for body armor for you. <laughs> true. 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 Yeah, and of course, you could. I mean, it is maybe he, he got an offer and then he bought it, and then he's going to spend the next uh, year cutting them into small circular bits and making a chain mail or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or start counterfeiting or something like that. No, it's just b- boring uh, garden dividers for the uh, for the pathway to the house that I'm finally started doing. Uh, so I'm digging in the ground. That's hard as stone because it hasn't rained in a long while. So it's like, yeah, it's, it feels like stone. <laughs> and I'm uh, three quarters of the way. Yeah. Nine of the 12 meters are dug so far. And it's kind of straight, straight enough at least for yeah. our purposes. So it's probably going to work out, hopefully. Have you, have you put any steel in it yet? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I've, I've put it in and, and covered it. Uh, kinda, uh, yeah. Uh, so far, to actually try to shore it up and get it to be somewhat straight. Oh, cool. The question is, do you butt weld them? So it's no. one continuous. You no. can't weld with your butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to eat a rather spicy meal first. Yeah. But... <laughs> no, I was thinking if I should attach them to each other, but I think I'm gonna let them be floating as it is. Uh, oh. If I decide not to, I can always dig them up and, and weld underground and done it before. It's fine. It's good for views as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah. But how many meters is it? I mean, in total? Uh, it's 12 meters in total. Uh, so I got it. Uh, and I'm going to do... Uh, so this is half of the steel for the pathway, and the other half will be to the to the parking uh, yeah. to keep that separated as well. I've been... I mean, for several years, I've been, I've been thinking about doing the same. And of course, at the, the local garden store, they, they sell these uh, metal or steel uh, dividers, but they, they sell them in like one or maybe two meter sections. And they are wafer thin and very expensive. So, yeah, when I, when yeah. I saw your picture, like, all right, maybe I should just... Maybe it is more cheap to get some decent steel and actually bury that. So uh, yeah, yeah, no yeah definitely. Uh, these these are uh, three mil thick and uh, uh, one hundred fifty millimeters uh, wide, and they come in six meters length. But those are far too long to, for me to handle, <clears throat> so I cut them in half for to be three meters because the, those are, I mean, those weigh like ten kilos. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so those are heavy enough um and i think uh, without watt it was like 10 quid a meter they cost so it was way cheaper oh. than the yeah. the garden center and yeah they they're not uh, they're not uh, they don't have any spiked edge that you can just ram into the ground but they're quite a lot bigger than than the rest of it so going to a steel supplier and i mean you feel rather grown up and cool going to a proper steel supplier as well, <laughs> even though you buy like not that much. But yeah, I think it's as long as you don't tell them what you're using it for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you probably only feel cool as well as long as you, if you're going in there actually knowing what you're asking for. True, true. Yeah, I think so you have to do some sure. research before, huh? But I mean, it's. I find it cool just be there and seeing all those big heavy machinery they have for cutting. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, they had a big hydraulic snips that was were almost as tall as me. We can use to cut this. And the wow. last time I went to the steel supplier, they used the the cold cut saw that was just a big saw who just it. I don't know. It was slow RPM. It just just dug through the. Just come down like that. Yeah, and it was actually coming up from below. Oh, okay. And just eating through it, and it, it looked like it didn't care that it was 
<laughs> a big piece of steel in in the way of it. So I yeah. mean, just watching those that's that's worth enough. That's cool. Um, I actually now also figured out what I'm going to do with the hot water tank that's just been laying around for uh, yeah, you had the last that one as well. Because I'm going to use the six. I'm going to use the top and the bottom for something. But then the middle section, what am I going to do with that one? And then, of course, we had uh, uh, last winter, someone uh, did uh, make a meal out of some of our bushes and trees. And then if I'm going to put some protectors around there. And it's also because when I now do the uh, the weed whacker and so on, I have to be really careful not to nick the bark as well. So I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to chop it up into many circular bits that I can put around the the trunk of trees basically mm -hmm. and then i thought well now i have the new welding table and if i buy some caster wheels uh, that is fixed so i can put upside down and i can put it on there so you can roll it freely then i can just uh clamp the the plasma cutter to it and then i can just press play and i can just slowly rotate it and then i should get yep. a really good straight circular cut and then i could make Maybe four or five decent rings out of it, so that's uh, that's going to be a nice project. That would be cool. Yeah. You say it's copper? No, it's a stainless steel. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, should be yeah, nice. That's... But the the question is, of course, I want. I don't like the stainless steel in the garden because I want it to rust. So I should surface treat it to, to uh, also make it rust or do something to it because the. The stainless steel it. look and of course uh, cutting it and grinding it with uh, some uh, materials you've used for basically regular steel you will get some rust and imperfections at the edges so uh, yeah could I'll paint it a... of course yeah paint it in some happy colors that'll make for a good shot or a 15 yeah. minute video knowing you <laughs> <laughs> yeah it should, should, should generate a lot of sparks so yeah it's yeah. going to be yeah, at I least mean, a few decent shorts out of it. Yeah. Have you used the plasma cutter yet? No. We. <laughs> and the, the the trick is that I've realized that the the small silent compressor I have is it's not beefy enough, so it's gonna run the um, the plasma cutter for like two or three seconds, and then it goes out of breath. So I okay. need a proper compressor, and uh, I know which one I want to get, um, and I'm working uh, trying to uh, make room for it uh, together with the new welding table um lathe. i have figured it out lathe yes that as well and <laughs> i now need to get rid of all my materials because that's what takes up the most space and uh, i should build by a tool cart that fits under my uh, workshop bench that's uh it was a goal for today. Um, I realized I need to build it myself. Of course, uh, as mentioned previously, it's uh, it's going to be more expensive than buying one. And I'm not sure if I want to make a lot of drawers. So I did actually, yesterday I did a remeasure the height under my uh, uh, bench. Uh, and I talked to a friend uh, about the issue and he said, well... Uh, if you go to this store, they, they have a decent but cheap uh, tool cart, but it might be too high. And I went in there and, of course, that one was too high, but they had another model that will fit under my table and on sale. Of course, it's the one with all the tools that I already have, <laughs> but it was so cheap and it's a decent quality. So I was uh, on my way to buy it today when I... Uh, had a pit stop at the store and oh, fuck, I couldn't be bothered going all the way to get it and back again. So I just went <laughs> home and uh, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be sold out tomorrow. Yeah, or not on sale anymore, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm still, it's so hard because you're sitting there in the car and I have looked at this model before. It's a great model. And once you buy it, you're going to have it for the rest of your workshop career. And but I can also build one that is better and like tailored to my needs. And but it's going to be procrastinated, and it's going to have the feature creep. And but that's of course okay. But 
I need it now to actually make my workshop more efficient and usable because uh, not today apparently not today apparently <laughs> but then again today I'm doing a podcast <laughs> so I'm not getting any uh, making done I need it now but today I can't be bothered yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> And then, of course, I went to the hardware store, and luckily, I didn't buy a lot of them. I buy, I bought one. I'm going to test it first. Uh, one of these gray Euro cases to see if it fit uh, with the dimensions of the welding table. But no, it's it's not good enough that I could just weld some uh, L brackets and call it a day. But yeah. it turns out they fit brilliantly in one of my other tables. So... Ah. Uh, I'm gonna buy a three or four more of those to uh, tidy up the the second workshop bench on casters where I have all my uh, miter saw and grinder and so on. So I'm gonna make that a bit more utilitarian. Do you know what? With all these new incoming tool dreams that you have, do you know what you need? A metal container. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, one, one still needs to dream, I guess. You need to have something to look forward to, I guess. Or a bigger workshop. Or a bigger workshop. Um, whoo, that's, a, that's a different topic altogether. Um, of course, the my wife's birthday is coming up. and um, She wants a, bir- a workshop. <laughs> exactly. <Happy> <laughs> <laughs> I got you a workshop. No, um, a friend of hers or a friend of the family, um, he's an architect and they will be there and uh, he has some spare time. So we have been discussing, should we have a chat? Because we have prepared the area outside for a garage. And then should we ask him to see what is most beneficial to have a standalone garage or have an integrated with the house and then uh, extend the roof and so on and just start to pick his brain and then ask him uh, how long it will take to just knock out some sketches so we can start discussing it because of course we need someone to help us with the I can't be bothered making all the drawings and the applications to the municipality to actually have it done but should we have him to make a package that we can present to a builder to, just to get a quote? And uh, of course, then garage. My wife might think that's for a car. I know that a garage is a theoretical space where you can put a car, but it is a workshop. So th- there are some uh, details we need to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> but once I got that, like that grain planted in your brain, um, I'm not sure I was on the online marketplace looking for something else. And there is not far from us, uh, there's a company and they have established themselves in all the major cities in Norway. They are in an industrial area. They built a large building like the ones you see in the TV programs, the storage wars or something like that, but much larger. So it's basically a huge building with a lot of different sizes of uh, storage rooms, but they have, some of them are like 70 square meters. uh, Some of them are hundred plus square meters where you have a a big garage door. And of course, inside you can have a mezzanine and there is water and uh, plumbing for a toilet there. And it is for a workshop, it's reasonably priced and this is not rental property. So you just, you buy in and once 10 persons has bought in, they built the next building stage and then they just continue to fill up that lot. And the price for that wasn't, I mean, (laughs) it's expensive, but not terribly expensive. But then again, that money, we could probably have a a garage and extension of the house, which will also drive the the value of the house up. So that's going to be the solution in the long term. But just playing with that thought, like having a proper brand new warehouse in probably together with other people also using it for workshops and so on. And, but the problem is 
you can buy it, but it would be 15 minutes drive away from our house. So you can't just pop down to the workshop and spend an hour and then it's the time and then it's the diesel driving back and forth. So you're going to have a very nice workshop, but you're going to use half an hour to an hour every time you're going to your workshop. So it's it's not an alternative, but of course, when you're starting to to think in that direction, it's uh, it fuels your dreams. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a drive away for a workshop would be a would be lovely if it was if it was your work every day wouldn't it but uh, yeah 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 not for not for the hobby thing that just wouldn't work i don't think what what annoys me is that when we moved here there is a house two roads down no one road down and it's, it's like a, it's a it's a 10 minute walk it's five minutes with a bicycle and it's an old brick building it has been I'm I'm not sure. It's it's been a, a company uh, a building or something, and there is one big room at the end with a with a big garage door. And when you look in, there there is racks on racks for like server power equipment. And the second half is made into two apartments, which the this company is renting out. And the building was for sale. I don't remember what it was for sale for but when i started thinking about it i went into the norwegian map service and then you can actually see who owns every property and you can also see what it was sold for last and then i looked at the price and for that price if we bought it a few years ago you could cover all your expenses with the two tenants that are actually yeah. renting those apartment and then the second half of that building is is like a dream workshop so of course if you can convince the bank into that project that all right you buy a building that pays for itself basically then you would have a workshop not attached to your house but it is like all right i'll pop down there and you could have like a walkie-talkie to talk to your your kids and it would be all a blast but yeah it's not for sale anymore and it would probably sell for a lot more now, I guess, because of course, once you have rental units, people think the same as I do. Well, if it can pay for itself, then uh, we can pay a bit more for it. And then, uh, yeah, so. <laughs> then again, we should just build a garage. <laughs> yeah, you should. I think that's probably the easiest <laughs> yeah. path for it. Yeah, you'll get the money back for it as well. Like you say, if you sell the house later on down the line, won't you, so? Yeah, and then you also have the... Uh, and that's a problem with every house owner. You 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 buy a house and then we're not sure how long we'll live here. And then when the kids grow up, so you just postponed a lot of things. And then suddenly, all right, we've lived here for 15 years. So we should have just done it when yeah. we thought about it. And I think the, the garage and the extension is one of those things. You should just do it because suddenly you've been living here for 20 years and the kids are just living just down the road and they're going to the university at this city and so on. So I should yeah. have extended my workshop 10 years ago instead of sitting here and <laughs> 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 buying a small lathe when I can have a, a big green one uh, <laughs> in 400 volts and three faces and yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to change the subject a little bit. We uh, started a WhatsApp group for all our listeners today. Yeah, that we did. We did. And, uh, and I've got to admit, I thought that at some point that nobody would want to join. And I was proved wrong today. So that was nice. We got some people sign up to it. It's great. Yeah. And it yeah. also gave us a feedback on uh, that people actually listen to the half pint once it's released. So someone is probably going to work and like, Oh, I'm going to listen to the podcast on the way to the work. So it's just yeah. people started joining the group from the early morning. That's really nice. Yeah, I think I might give them all a shout out. What do you think? Go for it. Go for I it. I mean, okay. you're the one with the list. <laughs> just here, look. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so today we had join, joined our group. We had Andy from Cormorant Craft Moira. John Mason from JM Woodcraft Scotland, 
Kev Sharkey from Shark Attack 1979. We had Ross from Fat Hog Woodworking. He's another YouTuber, by the way. And we had Steanosaurus, the dinosaur guy. And we had Michelle, all the makes. My wife. <laughs> Manga Susteran, Arne. Maker, Martin Berg. Roger Anderson at RVA Design 182. That made me think of the uh, Three Northern Makers <laughs> shout out. And we had <laughs> Mrs. KJ sign up too. She's yes. hiding in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure she'll say hi at some point. <laughs> I, I actually saw that you wished her welcome. And like I didn't see the notification of her joining. So I went into the group info and look at the, the members. And yeah, there yeah. she was. But I think that was f before Michelle joined. Because that was the, yeah. the follow-up I would do. Like, all right, we should get Michelle on. Because she is now the administrator on the WhatsApp group for the Bad Audio podcast. So maybe <laughs> she can do this one as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> I think it was quite nice that uh, the wives have joined when we had the, the whole question of what we were going to call the listeners in the first place. And the wives was a hot contender. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad that we didn't land on that one. <laughs> yeah, it would yeah. be a bit confusing, wouldn't it? <laughs> Definitely. No. <laughs> What was the other suggestion that we're relatively glad we don't end it on? Knobheads and wankers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm quite happy we didn't get that one. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine yeah. talking about that every week. Oh, the knobheads and wankers. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a week. <laughs> we'll see how it uh, turns out. That seems like a subsection. Perhaps all of those that we mute from the regular feed <laughs> yes maybe it spawns some subgroups who knows <laughs> it's reddit next <laughs> <laughs> might be maybe everybody tuned in so early this morning because of all your little teasers that you've been doing the past couple of weeks of all what do you think you've been teasing the half pint at the end of the main episode every week for the past couple of weeks haven't you i have maybe maybe it's, it's yeah yeah unconsciously then <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe it worked yeah but then again is it the is the whatsapp group the embodiment of the um, half pint soul i feel it is i mean it's a <laughs> it is very much a half pint group isn't it i mean topic wise and uh yeah or am i yeah. wrong yeah yeah probably mostly yeah, again, off Broadway thing. Give it a week, uh, and we'll see. We'll pick it up uh, again in the next episode, and uh, yeah, maybe that's the segue out of the main episode. Um, feel free to join. I mean, we are not uh, turning anyone uh, around that door. Um, so, of far. Course, uh, so far, so <laughs> far, and of course, we'll, we'll do a evaluation midterm if uh, someone uh, needs to be booted out no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> no uh, no the more the merrier and uh, feel free to drop any one of us a, a dm and request an entry and uh, we'll make it happen and yeah. we'll shout out any new members each week or each month or each year when somebody new joins <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just just don't expect any prices. I, I know we teased that, but uh, it's it's too much uh, hassle. No, I'm sure so, you yeah. said a hell quarter for each, each person, <laughs> didn't you? No, you, you said that after I said uh, everyone would get a specialized shout out. Was, uh... Well, there we go. I've done my part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe at some time uh, when I'll do my next sticker run, we'll, we'll see. I mean, uh, <laughs> we have a separate logo now as well. So we need separate stickers to start putting on things. So, yeah. I was thinking about that last week, actually. You know, when you were talking about changing the logo last week, I'm thinking you can't change the logo. I've got at least 30 stickers left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, when we run, run out, then we can think about changing, changing it. <laughs> yeah, but now we have the perfect chance. We can... We can make an iteration of the logo for the WhatsApp group. And if it turns out this was really good, then when we run out of stickers, we can, can just <laughs> slowly uh, back it into the main channel. So. <laughs> well, that's, that's a problem for another day. So, yeah. Definitely. 
In the meantime, good night, everyone, or good morning, or as KJ say, whatever you're having. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>